So as an instructional in example, as an instructional example, we use a very simple analog circuit. Yeah, so this this analog circuit is just a simple low pass filter. So here we've got our RC. This is a low pass filter has a certain cutoff frequency. And this is here H of S. And this is here omega c divided by s plus omega c and this is here our cutoff of the low pass low pass filter essentially what we are doing here so we are not not caring much about the omega c so we do what we use here in our example is just a generalized form and this is a and then 1 over s plus b yeah so we use this here as then as our function here and we just keep in mind this could be a low pass filter so we use this transfer function here so it's a transfer function in the analog domain so it's just a la plus representation so the time domain reaction is here in continuous time is h of t and this is just a and then e2 minus bt yeah so depending depending on this b here we are getting different decay rates. That's what we are expecting from a low pass filter. So that so that's T, that's our H of T in the impulse response will will be something like that. Yeah, so that we have an exponential decay here. Obviously as long as B is positive here in this case for positive for positive b and so so that's our laplace transform of this h of t here and this is inspired by our low pass filter here so so now we do this now the same thing what we have done before with the fir filter so the trick again is so let's let's sample the impulse response and do a Laplace transform. So let's sample h of t. So then we have here, let's just write this down again, so we have here a is e2 minus bt and so if we have now something like h of t equals to a and now we have a greater summation here which is running from 0 to infinity and then e2 minus b and then the then we have an nt here and we are adding as a delta function here because we would like to stick this into Laplace transform and with this we are eliminating the integral in the Laplace transform. So that's our, our sampled h of t and now the, the Laplace transform is just h of s 
and then we have here the zero to infinity h of t and then e2 minus st dt so that's our Laplace transform here and um, so we're just substituting this h of t in here and then with that we are getting here the summation out there the delta function removes essentially that. So now we can get rid of the integral in the Laplace transform because the delta function just picks us these moments in time at the distance of t of our sampling interval. So then our this is here our sampled impulse response and that's as we see an exponential or as we know that's an exponential and this is our sampled Laplace transform here so that's here our sampled impulse response this is our sampled Laplace transform and so we see already there's something special happening here because we have now two exponentials here so but before we come to that we can directly identify our z2-1 here so this is as we know here this is z2-1 and then the power to n so then therefore we can do a change in variables here and write a to n to 0 to infinity and then e2 minus b and t and then this gives us here z2 minus 1 and then power to n here and so and so we now already this here this is our recipe if we go back to the FIR filter design, is, this is essentially an FIR filter. Yeah, so here we've got our our coefficients here. So these are our h of n coefficient. Coefficients. And these are here our delay steps. So, so far we have not won anything, so so far we have just repeated our FIR derivation here. But the interesting thing is now that we can play around with this term here. So as I said already before, so that's an exponential here, that's an exponential here, so we can merge them into one term. So we have got h of z is a to n to infinity and this is e2 minus b n t z2 minus 1 to n so we can just rewrite this a bit and write n equals 0 to infinity e2 minus b t to the power of n and so this stays the same here and so now what we can do is we can just put them here together to one term and so that we have something like h of z equals a2 and then the infinite sum again and this is now e2 minus b t and z2 minus 1 with the power to the power of n. And so now that's a very important step here now because this is essentially a ge geometric series here. So if we have something like this
and this turns into that. Yeah, so and this is a geo metric series. And so with this trick, we can now write, which is I think which is totally identical. So we're getting rid of the summation sign here, and just write one minus one, one minus, and then e two minus b t z two minus one. And this is here an IRR filter now. So we have only one delay here. In contrast here to a number of infinite delays. So that's the amazing step here. So with so if we're using an impulse response, which is an exponential, this allows us to merge this exponential with that exponential and soon to arrive at a closed form. So this means if we have impulse responses which are dealing with ex with exponentials, then we are getting this closed form and we can turn this into an IRR filter. So now the next step is so how do we turn this into a data flow diagram? So that we see that we are actually getting an IRR filter, so a feedback term. And so the so the idea behind this is or the trick is we just apply a signal. Yeah, so we know that this is our transfer function here, so we can just write y of z is x of z multiplied by h of z. And so our h of z now, yeah, so that's our function which we just have derived, which is 1 over 1 minus e2 minus b t z2 minus 1. So what we just need to do is we need to multiply this essentially out here. Let's just write this down again. So y of z is x of z and then a 1 minus e2 minus b z2 minus 1. And so we just need to bring this term here over to the other side. So we've got y of z minus and then y of z e2 minus b z2 minus 1 and then this equals a x of z. So now we just need to move this here over to the other side so that we have y of z, that's still a capital Y, y of z equals a x of z now plus y of z e2 minus b z2 minus 1 and then this a x of z plus z2 minus 1 y of z and then e2 minus b so now, in this form here, let's just write this here, this y of z again. So, in this form now, it's easy to see how this can be turned into a data flow diagram. So this z2 minus 1 here means that the y of z delayed by one time step. And then this is 
delayed by one time step and this here oops there's a t missing here let's just add the t here which is disappeared and so this one here is just our waiting factor or coefficient and this is here obviously our input and this is here our coefficient in this case here the FIR FIR coefficient we could call this here and so this we can now easily turn into a circuit diagram so we've got our X of N and then we multiply this with A so we could just draw this like a amplifier symbol here so we multiply this with A and so now we have a summation node for our recursive process here and so then we have a delay step T and then this delayed signal here is sent back into this summation node here and this is multiplied with with E2 minus BT and then the output is here and this is our Y of N and so our IIR filter circuit diagram looks like this so we have a recursive filter with one time step this is weighted so feedback is weighted by this factor E2 minus BT here and the input here is multiplied by A as expected like in, in, in the FIR filter and so this is here our IIR filter